Some of you may be familiar, I was here a couple months ago and we talked about the SCBA. Now obviously the SCBAs have arrived. Uh, if you didn't know that, they're all here. Uh, we worked this afternoon getting them kind of put together and that and configured how the department wants them. So I uh, have a, quite a few up in the uh, annex or whatever you guys call it up top there that are all ready to go. So when you get done with the class, if you have time, if you desire, obviously you can go up and play with them. But here in the next couple weeks and that, obviously be a lot more training, hands-on and all that. Uh, focus tonight is going to be just the nuts and bolts of how things go together and all that. I don't want to say it's going to be a repeat of the prior, but it's going to be very similar to what we did before. The difference before is we were talking about options. You could have this, you could have that. Now we're talking about exactly what you guys have and how it exact functions. So um, as Ed mentioned, questions are great. I really would love questions because it helps me to kind of know what you guys are thinking and where you're at with everything on the SCBA. So uh, by all means, there's, like he mentioned, no, uh, no stupid questions at all. Please ask them. Um, as we started last time, the face piece is the biggest difference with the new breathing apparatus to your current old, however you want to title it, your existing breathing apparatus. Um, what we've done is we've taken all of the electronics off of the face piece. So the heads up display and the amplifier that are on your current face piece are now onto the SCBA and not on the mask. So there's not a single battery, a single electronic thing, however you want to title it, on the face piece. Lightens it up lowers the cost as well as another benefit. Not really a benefit that you worry too much about, but at the same time you do worry about it. Um, the big thing is it lightens up the mask as far as the weight. There are three sizes of face pieces available, small, medium, and large. How we denote the different sizes is the color of this tab right here. If you notice this tab right here is black, and on the other sizes, so a large has an alpha right here, L, and it also has a gray tab right here and then the smalls has an S and it has green tabs. When I say right there it's obviously on both sides all the way around so easy to be able to identify which one it is. From what I understand right now from uh, 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 management is that what we're going to have is we're going to have mediums issued to the rigs. So on all the apparatus is going to be medium masks with the breathing apparatus and if somebody has a special need for a small or a large they'll be issued that individual size that they need to meet that uh, need. Um, you'll be face fit tested on this new mask. It is a different ceiling surface, so you will be face fit tested, so everybody will have the chance to be able to make sure they have a good fit with their face piece. On this, you also have the ability to change the nose cup size, the small, medium, and large, and the nose cup size. Right now, a small has a small, a medium has a medium, and a large has a large nose cup inside of it. But if for some reason you need a small mask with a large nose cup, Ed or whoever's going to be issuing the masks, face fit test and doing that, can be able to change out the nose cups. It might be Gordon, I'm not sure, Ian, whoever is in charge of that, down that takes place. Um, so the idea is you should be able to get a very, very comfortable, good fit, good seal, and be able to comfortably use the SCBA mask. Um, on the mask itself, when you do put it on, what you'll note a little bit different than your current SCBA mask, and I'm going to reference that a lot because that's what you guys know right now, if you follow me, is the SCBA masks that are on and the SCBAs that are on the rigs. But your current SCBA mask, when you put it on, there's a little bit of resistance when you go to breathe, not when you're on air. So just when you put the mask on, there's a little bit of resistance there. Um, that's because you have what's called an inhalation check valve. It only allows air to go in the mask and forces your exhaled air down the exhalation valve. But because of that valve, there's some resistance when you go to take a breath in. With this new mask, there's a separate pipeway, and a door, a doorway, a in, in, in and out in the mask, however you want to title it, that allows when you're not connected to your regulator, it's in the bottom right here where my finger's at, and what it allows for is you to breathe as easy as you are right now. There's no valves or anything that you have to breathe through. So when you put the mask on, it should be very easy to be able to breathe. As soon as you put the regulator into the mask, what happens is the gasket on the regulator shuts that doorway, that valve, that everyone just worded, that, ex that entrance exit, shuts that off and only allows the air from the SCBA to go up into the mask. Okay? There still is an inhalation check valve. It's at now the bridge of your nose. Pretty hard for you to be able to see where you're at when you get your mask in your hand and that you'll be able to see it really easy. But there's a black little disc right here. When you take a breath in, it opens. When you go to exhale, it closes, and the exhaled air goes down through the exhalation valve. Why I bring that up is after you're done using the SCBA, the only thing you need to sanitize is the face piece. 
you do not need to sanitize the second stage regulator. Note I use the word sanitize, right? Sanitization is killing the bugs. Cleaning is a whole different topic. That's getting the dirt, the debris, the junk out of it. Sanitizing it is trying to clean it so it's not dirty from my exhaled air, my spit, my saliva, so the next person doesn't have that as their first breath. So here again, when you're going to clean the SC, or excuse me, sanitize the SCBAs, you're going to sanitize the mask only. Regulator, going to clean that. Make sense? OK. So on the head net, you have a, a, a similar to what you have now. We've added a pull strap here so you can pull it down in the back. Um, you have four adjustments. They are Kevlar elastic, so unfortunately they will stretch out. If you pull them as tight as humanly possible, every time you put on your mask, they're going to be nine feet long. Okay? All you need to do is you need to just pull them tight. You don't need to reef on them to tighten them down. Make sense? The pull loop here is a big add. That gives you quite a bit of ability to pull it down in the back on your head net. Um, there's a D-ring at each one of the buckles. So right here, as well as here, as well as on the same thing on the, uh, maybe, uh, is on the other side. There's rings there. The idea of the ring is there's a hook on the shoulder strap on your, when you're wearing it, your left shoulder strap. So you can hook your mask in a standby, right like that, or from the bottom one, or whichever one you want. Okay, make sense? Got rid of the neck strap. Okay, all of a sudden somebody has heartburn, and my gosh, they really need that neck strap. Talk to your SCBA guys. We can work it out. There is neck straps available, but the intent is the neck strap is kind of a hang-up point, and so a lot of departments are trying to get the neck straps off the SCBA. But if your SCBA, your management feels it. You know, you have a valid need, want, desire, obviously they are available and we have the ability to get them for you. Um, that's what this little dot right here, that's where the hook for the neck strap goes. It can either go inside of there or it can go onto these rings either place. Gives you the ability to hang it there. Okay. Um, how did we take the electronics off the face piece? My gosh, you got to have heads up display. You got to have lights in your mask. How do you do it without having electronics in your face piece? What we did is we put the lights at the end of the regulator. Okay? But if we had the regulator and had the lights on there, that would block your view, right? So what we did is we put light pipes is what we call it. You can call it a fiber optic. That's the simplest thing to think of in your mind. It's not exactly that, but in mind sight, that's the easiest way to communicate it. But basically what you have is little dots right here you see. There's a little pipeway that goes up to a dashboard that's located right here. When I put my mask on, I'll have my dashboard right at my cheek. The light on the regulator is shining through those, those fiber optics, those dots, and bringing the light around to my chin. Does that make sense? So it's not seeing the light off the regulator, it's seeing the light coming through the mask. On your right hand side, you'll have your heads up display. It's very similar to what you have now. Four green lights, somewhere from full to three quarters. Three green lights, three quarters to half, half to 33%, uh, two flashing ambers, and 33% down to zero, one flashing red. The difference for you right now is your current SCBA starts the red at 25%. So the new standard has increased, they call it the EOSTI, end of service time indicator, your alarm, your warning, however you want to title it. But basically, that is now going to start sounding light, visual, touch, whatever way it does it, but 33% rather than 25. The mentality is to tell you to get out of the structure, but to give you more time if you hit that mark to be able to exit the structure. Okay. So here again, we're doing the heads-up display from the regulator light pipes going on the right-hand side of my mask, or my view, however you want to title it. If you notice, there's four dots on this right-hand side. There's three dots here, and I, I think I'm close somewhere in there if you follow. Okay. Here again, I know you're looking at this from a distance. You're going to have this in your hand in a few minutes, so you'll be able to see it a little bit more. But you have three dots over here. These are other than air warnings. What I mean by that is there's little icons, actually. One is a picture of a battery. It tells you when the battery is low on the SCBA. The other one is a running man. It's an option that you do not have, so you don't need to worry about, but it's an evacuation signal. So there's a little running man. Once again, that's not an option you chose, so don't worry about that. The battery, and then the third one is a triangle. What the triangle indicates is your pass device is in pre or full alarm. 
okay? You might just, whatever, this sales guy is just going through his jabber. That's gonna be important to you. Grasp onto that thing right there. That's a nugget you wanna hold on to right now. The sound for your pass device on the new SCBA comes from the lower back. Right here, and right here on this side right here, okay? You're gonna go into pre-alarm and guess what's gonna happen? I think it's that guy behind you. Because what are you used to right now? The sound right here blasting, okay? So you know it's you. Now all of a sudden the sound's blasting from back here, you think it's the guy behind you. That triangle in your mask tells you what? It's you, okay? What we did today is we also programmed the SCBA to try to alleviate this from being an issue for you folks, is we programmed the SCBA so that the pre-alarm of the pass device also sounds through this speaker. So you're gonna have it back, speaker, red light. We'll get into the pass device more. Obviously I digress, I apologize. What I was focused on was a triangle in my mask, okay? Once again, triangle in my mask tells me it's my pass device. I need to have movement, movement of my control module. So three icons there, only two of them so-called active for you folks. One is a picture of a battery, the other one is my pass device pre-alarm or full alarm activation. Make sense? Yes, sir? In the light type, do you walk so you can see the illumination? Absolutely. If you were to take a foreign matter and put onto here, the light can't shine through. So that's why here again, when we're cleaning the sanitizing the face piece, we want to make sure that this is clean. Generally statement, if it's clean enough to wear it, you're not gonna have an issue with that. When you're wearing the SCBA, debris cannot get into there. Okay, it would be when it's off, these two are separated, then obviously you'd have issues with dirt, debris, whatever getting into there. The hope would be obviously that would be external when you're not in an IDLH environment. The thing that you have on your current face piece is an amplifier, okay? We're all familiar with that, got a microphone inside, amplifier on the outside. What we did on this FCBA is we took and we put the amplifier on your chest, so it's attached to your breathing apparatus. The microphone is the two dots on the end of the regulator. When I take this regulator and put it into the mask, where do those two dots line up with? The in and out door. What was the in and out door? Open pipeway to the outside, right? So what's my communication have the ability to do? Open pipeway to the microphone, okay? So pretty impressive communications. I connect this. I'm connecting the microphone into my mask. Speaker is on the outside. When I pressurize this system, what you're gonna see is a blue light's gonna come on on the amplifier. That's telling me that the amplifier is on and every word I say is amplified. When I disconnect this regulator from the mask, after five seconds, the amplifier microphone is turned off. The blue light is still on, but the microphone is turned off. Why would that matter? Well, when it's in my waist belt and I'm running or doing whatever, do I want that to be amplified? When do I want it amplified? When the regulator's in my mask, right? Okay, so that's when it's gonna happen. You'll know when you first put on the SCBA, it'll amplify your inhalation and your exhalation, your breath in and your breath out. It learns, the SCBA learns, what your breath in sounds like after about three breaths. Then what it does is it mutes the inhalation sound. So all you're hearing is the exhaled sound, which can be you breathing, your exhaled air, or what? You talking. When do you talk? You talk on your exhale, not on your inhale, right? You talk when you're blowing out, shall we call it, okay? So that's the way it's designed to work. At any time you choose, let's say there's 10 of us in a small room doing whatever we're doing, and it's just too much noise, I want to turn my amplifier off. I simply hold down where the blue button is at for about two seconds. The blue button will go away. The amplifier is turned off. I want to turn the amplifier back on. All I simply need to do is push the button again. Blue light comes on. The amplifier is right on. Note that I turned it on, turned it off. It doesn't need to relearn what my inhalation sounds like. It already knows. The only time it relearns is when you completely shut the electronics off for the entire SCBA. Then it relearns. Make sense? Yes, sir. 
Absolutely not. Yep. But your, your, your sound of your inhale does not change if you follow me. Uh, the volume uh, uh, of your inhale, and I don't have a pocket protector and a bunch of letters after my last name. I'm not that smart of a guy. But those guys figured out a way to make that happen if you follow me. And here again, don't take my word for it. When you're out doing the RIT trainings and before you put these in, you'll find that it doesn't need to learn if you follow me. It just learns that first couple breaths and then away you go. Okay. There is radio communication capabilities with this. Right now your radios don't support it. It does it through Bluetooth and your radios right now aren't talking to it. But if you, next 5, 10, 20 years, whatever it is, with your SCBAs, if you buy a, a radio that has Bluetooth, then the SCBA can talk to the Bluetooth. Motorola APX series is the one that works right now. So uh, the Motorola guy would love to come uh, uh, visit you. Uh, he's following right, he's almost behind me every time I go sell some SCBAs. He's right there uh, uh, behind me. Polk One just uh, bought SCBAs and they uh, bought Motorola's just uh, signed the purchase order. So <laughs> cash to go with it because they're pretty expensive, yeah. Uh, the 4000 series, I guess, is a, a lower cost one that works real well with this uh, deal. So I don't, again, I don't sell radios. I wish I did, but I don't. Um, so here again, that's capable right now. Once again, a feature that's not utilized by you guys, but maybe in the future if you still get to that point with the radios. Um, so that's pretty much the mask. Is there any questions anybody can think of with regards to the face piece? Yes, sir. When you're using a radio, where do you put the radio? You don't hold it to your mouth, you hold it to the mouth. Yeah. All your, all your communication is coming out of here. So really what you should be able to do is just key it if, it's a, if you have a lapel. And you should be able just to key it in its place. And it should pick up the projection coming off the speaker. But if you wanted to put your lapel right where the sound's coming out, this is where the sound's coming out. There's still sound coming out of your mask. But obviously it's not amplified. This is the best sound. So my recommendation would be even if you are using it on your right hand side, Probably the perfect world would be to have your lapel mic on your left hand side. But if for some reason it works better for you to have it on your right side, just key it in place and talk. The beauty is, is you don't have to do any of this stuff if you follow me. You're basically just talking to it. Okay? Okay. Um, so once again, face piece. Uh, you just look at that. His timing is impeccable. Uh, so uh, uh, what you also have is what we call an APR adapter. And what there's one that's open, so that's what I'm, there it is. Uh, that's what I'm searching for. Uh, so what you have is, a, uh, we call it an APR adapter. Because that mask has that open pipeway that we talked about, what you have the ability to do is to have an adapter, looks just like this. And what you have the ability to do is to snap it into any mask. Doesn't matter the size, it's all the same. You push that in. And that converts the mass to having what in our industry we call DIN or 40 millimeter thread. What it is is almost all filters have this thread. It's kind of a standard throughout the industry. So you'd have the ability to spin a filter cartridge onto the mask and be able to use the mask as an APR mask rather than an SCBA mask. Okay? Now I need to use it as an SCBA. I have the ability, I just push down this top button and I have the ability now to use it with my SCBA. I want to go back to APR. I simply push that in. I'm back to APR. You purchased uh, four of these. The real intent for your purchase right now, from what I understand, was for use for face fit testing. Okay, So you'd have the ability to use them for face fit testing. But uh, keep in mind that you have these. You're face fit tested to this mask. So now all of a sudden you get that call, and we all have probably been on that call if you follow me, uh, that something doesn't smell real good, and you don't really need to be on SCBA, you're going to be there for quite a while, you have the ability to pop these into your mask and be able to use them. Um, so here again, there is different filters that filter out different things. Um, when we originally designed the breathing apparatus, it was designed as an overhaul mask. As we know now, we're really not using SCBAs in, or uh, mask APR in overhaul. We want you to be on air. So the application for this has kind of changed to maybe the medical or the, I don't want you to call it cleanup side of the house uh, after the bad medical call maybe or something. You follow where I'm at? Make sense? So here again, I think those are probably more in your office is kind of where they're at if is the location. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Um, Going then back to the SCBA, we talked a little bit about the second stage regulator. We talked about the lights and the microphone. 
um, hooking the regulator up, what I have is I have a red knob, which is my bypass. Just like you have now, anytime you want to turn on the bypass, it's live. Obviously, this SCBA isn't pressurized, so when I turn it, nothing's going to come out, but I have the ability to turn this. The more I turn this valve, the more air I'm going to get out of my bypass, to the point I can turn it wide open. What's going to happen to the amount of air in my cylinder? Going to deplete really rapid. Okay? But here again, depending on the physical fitness, what I'm doing, I may need more or less air. When I go to my bypass, it's a constant flow of air. It's no longer aspirations. Now it's constantly flowing air through my mask. So my amount of air in my cylinder drains much more rapid. So we go to bypass, we should be getting our partner and getting out of there. Okay, make sense? Normal position for the bypass is off. Um, when I put them to go don the SCBA, the waste belt keeper, I should have sh 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 that better. Um, what you have now is it only the regulator only goes in in one position. This now allows the regulator to go in in any orientation you desire. Okay? And when it's in there, it swivels 360 to wherever least resistance is at. To take it off of the holster, you simply depress both the buttons, top, bottom, however you want to title it, but both of those buttons release it off of there. Pushing it back on is as simple as that. Um, what you want to do when you go to put it on, so that would be in my holster right here. You want to do what we call a front sweep and just basically do this right here and connect it up. What will happen is when you grab this, it naturally goes in your hand so that the bypass goes to your right hand side, which then brings the regulator right up to its orientation point and pushes in. Now if I was off-centered, let's say I didn't have everything lined up, and I'm intentionally making it more dramatic right now, but I'm here, if I just rock it back to that middle position, I don't know if you can hear that, it's falling into that groove where I can push it in. So if you do bring it up and you're not lined up perfectly, just turn it right or left and push in, and it snaps into position. As soon as I have that in, I take my first breath, the air activates and we're off and going. To remove the second stage, I need to depress the top button and the bottom button, 12 and 6, however you want to word it. I depress both of those, pull straight out. Not only am I shutting off the air, but I'm releasing the regulator from the mask. Truth be told, the bottom button is the air shutoff button. Whereas on your current SCBA, you may or may not be aware of this right now, your top button is your air shutoff. We flipped it on this SCBA, so now it's your bottom button is your air shutoff. That'll be important with a trivia question at the end, so take note. Uh, so once again, depressing both of those takes the regulator right off as well as shuts the air off. Now, yes, sir? If you press the bottom button, the air button, instead of it hooked to your mask, would you be sucking rubber? What would you do? You'd be sucking rubber. But you would have to hold the button down. You'd have to continue to hold the button down, and then you, to use your turn would be sucking rubber. If you push it and then let go, it's going to be like you just put the regulator on, and it'll start flowing once you take your first breath. So let's take your, your analogy. I'm going to take it one step further. You didn't say this, but I'm going to kind of say it. Uh, as you fall onto something, dream whatever it is. I don't really care. It doesn't make a difference to me. But you push this, and it's held down for whatever reason. What do you need to do? Bypass. Bypass. There's another answer, too. Move your head, right? <laughs> I always got focused on the bypass. The bypass is the answer, but move your head. That takes care of it as well. If this button is depressed, no air is coming out of the SCBA. Okay? So either A, get that so that button's not depressed, or go to the bypass. Make sense? Exact same scenario that you have on your current SCBAs. The difference is it's the top button. Nobody's even probably noticed that that was a shutoff switch, if you follow me. You just know when you take the mask off, all of a sudden the regulator doesn't have air coming out of it. The top button is your air shutoff. Bottom is on this one. Make sense? Okay, so that's your connection of your regulator to your uh, SCBA mask. Okay. Now, what my trivia question was going to be later, but I'll go ahead and hit it now, is you also have the ability to take the mask off with the second stage regulator connected. How would you do that? Excuse me? Eh. Bingo. Okay. Sorry, I like it. I like that. I owe you a quarter for having the wrong answer because it was it made it even better. Now nobody will forget. <laughs> you get a nickel for having the right one. <laughs> um, so once again, what we said is the bottom button, if we want to, 
we hit the bottom button, we undo the straps, take the mask off, and now the regulator is connected to the mask, but it's not flowing air. I now put my mask back on, take my first breath, and what's going to happen? Set to go. What I didn't do is do a face fit check, though, right, or a seal check. How would I do that? The bottom button. God, you're getting rich tonight. Uh, so if I want to do a, a seal check, I hold the bottom button, take a breath in. If I don't have a seal, I can tell where my leak is at if you follow me. Make sense? Okay. Questions, comments on the second stage? Okay. Second stage has two acceptable positions, in my opinion. I am not your chief. I am not your training officer. But I think they would agree with me. Has two acceptable positions. One is in the holster. The other one is in the mask. Anywhere in between is unacceptable. What I mean by that is leaving the, taking the SCBA. I'm so tired. I've got to take this SCBA off immediately. And I just throw it in the pile. What happens? This is sitting out. What's going into the uh, regulator? Whatever's in the environment. Grass, mud, dirt, whatever. What's my first breath? Grass, dirt, mud, whatever, OK? So here again, put it in the holster. Should be just a simple holstering like a pistol type mentality. Uh, goes back into the holster when it's not being used. Um, extreme cold weather environment, OK? We don't get it really here, but that's fine. We'll talk about it anyways. Before you go to hook your regulator into your mask, it's a good idea to crack your bypass. What we're checking is to make sure that water didn't get filled up inside of this regulator. You go and take your first breath, and what happens? Nothing, because it's all iced up. If I can't get air out of the regulator with my bypass, I got a problem. I need to go get the SCBA warmed up. Like I said, I've never heard of it here, so we don't get that. We're not Alaska, if you follow me. Uh, but once again, keep the water out of the regulator. By doing that, keeping it in the holster keeps the water out of it. Make sense? Okay. All right, so now let's go to uh, uh, kind of the electronic side of things. Um, when I pressurize the SCBA, what you're going to hear is you're going to hear the pass device go on. No different than what you know now. The pass device is air activated. So I'm going to try to kind of turn the SCBA a little bit. We've got to kind of keep it to this cognizant of the video as well. But what I want you to focus, before I drop everything, is up on the control module and then also on the back. And I'll kind of Vanna White it here so you can all see. Turn it on just like you have now, the bell cocks, right? Now the electronics turn on. What do I have? It's going to go through a self-diagnostic. It's going to give me a green check mark, and the unit's going to be on. Notice I have a blue light on the top of my amplifier telling me that that unit is on. Okay. On my control module, what I have now is I have a display showing me my air pressure uh, uh, pneumatically as well as digitally. I leave this device motionless for 18 seconds. Okay, Not my hips, just my control device right here. That doesn't sense movement for 18 seconds. It starts sounding a pre-alarm tone. At the same time it sounds the pre-alarm tone, notice the lights. I don't know if everybody can see the lights on the back. I'm not going to move it right now, but I'll show you here in a second. Okay, So notice the lights change to red. Elevates to a louder pre-alarm in four seconds. <coughs> Elevates to a louder pre-alarm in four seconds. Now it's been 30 seconds. Now it goes into a full alarm. Okay. Once I'm in full alarm, movement will not reset it. I have to manually push twice on either one of the two push buttons. The pre-alarm is louder than the full alarm. Is that the what? Yeah. Okay. I agree. Um, NFPA has now dictated what the alarm, full alarm sound has to be, as well as its sound pattern, what it sounds like, as well as its decibel level. We can make it louder, as you can tell. Our pre-alarm isn't regulated. So you can tell we made that even louder. But NFPA, here again, I'm on video, so i got to watch what I say. Uh, my belief is they, uh, they will change in the future to make it louder. What it will mean for you folks is a simple firmware upgrade to your SCBA. As you can tell, our speaker has the ability to be louder. Right now, they say we can't be louder. Does that make sense? Okay. Doesn't make sense, but it, it it's, uh, makes sense the rationale behind whatever it is. What it is. Yeah. Uh, question? Yes. 
I hear you. I call it the NFPA birds, but uh, yeah, I, I <laughs> what the, uh, I'll give you my Steve Morris long-winded example or explanation of it. What they wanted is every manufacturer in our industry has a different full alarm sound on their pass device. So command rolls up, he's got mutual aid companies from multiple departments, all of a sudden he hears this blasting sound and I don't know what that is. The neighbor uses something what I don't know what is it yeah so the intent is is that after 5 10 15 years everybody will have bought new SCBAs and now an incident commander when he hears that full alarm he knows instantly hey that's a full alarm we got a problem he's not going to hear that one. <laughs> <laughs> touche all right sorry <laughs> he will because the standard will have changed by then <laughs> Um, so no, what I was also trying to show is the light on the back here, okay? So you have two locations, one on each side, you have two locations where there's light. One is to the side right here, it's green. The other one is to the lower back, okay? So right here, as well as right here. So if I'm crawling in front of you, you have the ability to see that light. If I'm next to you, you have the ability to see that light. You also have a light right here that's reflective of your air pressure. Notice everything is green right now. When I shut my cylinder off, I now drain the air pressure down to right around 50%. Note what will happen to those lights. Automatically, I didn't do anything, but what are they shining now? Okay. Note on the front here, Amber. Notice on the end of my regulator as well, right here, is flashing amber. It did not flash green. So it only takes the O-ring from being an exposed O-ring to being an internal O-ring. So when you go to take your cylinder out, what you have is you have a quarter turn right here on this ring. So all I'm doing is quarter turning and then I'm pulling back and I disconnected from the SCBA cylinder. Okay? To put that back on, all I simply do is I push in and it locks back into place. <laughs> Sold! <laughs> what <do you> play? <laughs> well, and to be frank, that's the sad part, is this type of connection has been used in Europe for, I don't know what, 20, but 15 probably, if not longer. Uh, so here again. But we're here now, right? We're about uh, yesteryear. Uh, so here again, once again, I can have the ability to take that on and off. Also note on the SCBA, and we're going to take this all the way out, but I want to go back a step real. Um, notice where the cylinder band is at. Your existing SCBA has it about in the middle. What that requires you is when you want to take your cylinder out to do a cylinder change, you have to come up the shoulders, up the top, however you want to title it. What we did on this is we moved the band closer to the top. Okay. So note, and, it, and I apologize if you can't see from where you're sitting, but I undo the band, I undo my connection, I push forward about two inches, and I can unload or reload through the bottom, okay? Because note what there is, is there's a dovetail right here that is lining up with the receptacle dovetail on the SCBA, okay? So now to make a cylinder change, I simply slide this in, I go up beyond it, and come back down, and it's right into spot. If I still want to, for whatever reason, I can take it all the way out the top, but probably let it go away and drop it on the table and break things. Here, bottle. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it should, I'm more worried about the table is what I'm worried about. They go dent in it probably. Uh, but note, I can't have the ability to load it either way I want. I think what you'll find is you're now going to load them like that because it's obviously so much easier. Um, on the band itself, um, let me turn this so you guys can see. So on the band itself, all I'm doing is locking this down. I'm pushing in, and it's locking into place. To release it, I'm squeezing the outside of it, and that releases the tension on it. Once again, to lock it back down, I'm hitting that. Okay. Um, so on the cylinder itself, we have this adapter right here. Okay. So that's how I'm doing that quick connect. I said we eliminated the O-ring. No, there's no O-ring on here that I have to worry about this fitting coming loose, any of that action. 
The O-ring is underneath this fitting. Takes a, 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 a crow's foot to be able to take this off, but I still have the ability if I needed to, I could take this adapter off of here and I'm back to what you have on your rig right now. Okay? I understand, I understand, but there's a reason for this. Um, obviously, all of your SCBAs are going to have this adapter onto it. It's going to be torqued onto it, okay, by your SCBA technicians. But now we run a mutual aid call with Mount Angel. They ran out of cylinders. We needed to give them one of our cylinders to be able to put into their SCBA. I can spin this off of here. I can take a crescent wrench, for that matter, to take it off. They use that cylinder. They fin we finished the whatever we needed to do. Now I'm back here. I need to refill my bottle in that. What we want you to do is we want you to tag that cylinder with the fitting and let your SCBA technicians retorque it onto there. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? I was asked to make sure I made that crystal clear. I think I just did, but if I need to say it again, I will. If the fitting comes off, have your SCBA technicians torque it onto there. The issue is, is our uh oh, the world must be coming to an end. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry using them. Uh, so the issue is not typically that you did them on too or not tight or how do I want to word this? What we're concerned about? Over too tight. Okay? Because what do you think? High pressure air, I need to tighten this thing down, right? So you get out the cheater bar and you crank her down. You don't need it's 15 foot pounds is what the torque is. So we don't want to go above that. Yeah, that's why we'd like the SCBA technicians to be doing that. They have the foot pound torque wrench. They have the, uh, uh, the crow's foot to be able to do it properly. Easy for them to do it. You guys are in a huge luxury position. You have three SCBA cylinders per SCBA. I mean you got plenty of air. So I don't think you're going to run into an issue very frequent. Okay. But here again, I want to make sure that you're crystal clear that you can take this off and be able to fill this, use this, you know, in a different department if you need to desire, whatever. If the other shoe fell, you went to somewhere and you needed another cylinder, you could take this adapter off, put it onto one of their bottles, and be able to use it. What's our variable there? We don't have the torque and we don't have all that capability. Okay? So there's where the issue is. This is where the O-ring is at now. The O-ring that used to be on your coupling nut, it is now inside of here. The beauty of this is what? It's torqued down and it doesn't come loose every time I take a bottle on and off. Right? I torque this on and it's set. I don't have to worry about it. Questions or comments on the cylinders? You should have one. What's the rated time? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so this is a, considered a 45-minute cylinder. 66 cubic feet of air is what it has. Um, your current bottles are 30-minute cylinders, and they have 45 cubic feet of air. So the rating is, like you said, rating, because nobody's going to get 45 minutes out of it, but we rate these at 45-minute cylinders. Make sense? And that's down to the low alarm? No, that's from top to bottom. Yeah, so the way they rate the cylinders, and I don't remember the liters per air, I apologize for not knowing that, I should know that, but it's more or less you sitting like you are right now with an SCBA on, breathing, doing basically nothing. You start elevating your breathing rate, obviously you don't get 45 minutes out of it. Yeah. But the alarm is going to go off at a more air It is, yep, yep. Because, well, and way more. And here's the reason why, two reasons. One is on the new SCBA, the low air alarm is set to go off at 33%. Okay? Your old ones are set to go off at 25 so that's more air. And now you've taken a larger capacity cylinder, so obviously now you've increased where the amount of air is available at 1,500 PSI. You follow? Yep. yep. So what, what we so what, back is... Yeah, well, and that's... that's, that's, that's the amount of work time and then a lot more safety on the uh, I mean, there's, there's, you could get an argument there. That's, a, I mean, it's a valid statement what you're making, but uh, somebody, you know, I mean, yeah, but uh, the, the theory is you got a bit more air, so you have more ability to a have more ability to work time. But by jacking the alarm up, what we've really tried to do is give you more escape time. Um, exactly, that's exactly right. Um, so 
you know, as far as uh, uh, getting more work, more ability to get more work done, I'm not so sure I would go yes or no on that. Um, mm -hmm. You got more air. Yep. Well, we still train the egress at 50%, depending on the situation, depending on how deep you are into the building, if it takes you 50% to get in, you to get out. So uh, that's, a, that's just a training issue. Yep. But is that 50% more than what you currently have? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, it is. Yep, yep. Um, is it heavier? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> this SCBA weighs probably about five, maybe even five and a half pounds more than your current SCBA. Okay. Um, but we talked about this today, and I don't, you know, here again, you'll find it for yourself. Um, if you weigh them like this, this is to use Trump piggy. Uh, it's heavier. Okay. Um, but you put it on your back, the ergonomics. I, I, you know, yeah, I'm not going to make that statement. You make it. That's good. Uh, but but it, it feels it feels good if you follow me. Yeah. You don't notice the weight. But if you just take it like this, this one's way heavier. No question. Okay. Um, can I take and put my old cylinder? Is a 30 minute cylinder. Call it this diameter. Okay. Here again, don't know the exact, but you follow what I'm getting at. Smaller diameter cylinder, right? Can I take that existing 30 minute cylinder and put it into my brand new SCBA? Absolutely. What I have to do is change the band, right? So if you note, there's a little tab, foot plate, I don't know what the right wording is, right here. Okay. When I depress that, notice I have the ability now to adjust that down. Okay. Now I also have the ability, obviously, to adjust that back up to wherever it's at. There's a lot of adjustments here. We don't mark them as far as what cylinder capacities. So the easiest thing to do is to take the cylinder that you're desiring to use, put it into there, make the adjustment with the cylinder in there, if you follow me. Big or small or whatever I need to do over here. Okay, I need to go just a touch tighter. Follow me? That's basically what it is. Yeah. How would the other cylinders work in there with the dovetail? You wouldn't have the dovetail. Okay, so what you would have to do if you've now taken my statement, what he's taken is a cylinder that's not my new G1 cylinder, it's my old uh, Firehawk type cylinder. I would obviously have to do two things, right? First thing is I'd have to put an adapter onto the existing cylinder to make it work. If it didn't have a dovetail, I can still use it in the SCBA, but what I have to do is I have to do what I call hold load. And what I mean by that is I can't just drop it in and everything's going to line up perfect. I need to make this connection first and then lock everything down. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? Okay. Because you can't just drop it in and this is going to line up perfect because it has no stopping spot without that dovetail on it. Yes? Going back to when you were talking about depressing it to fit another bottle, is there any chance where that can get in and your bottle would come out? Um, anything's possible. The thing is, is you have the dovetail holding it, and then the only thing, if that came all the way out, it would still hold the bottle, but what would happen is it would not be obviously snugged into it. Um, your bigger issue, what I would say, is that this comes loose here, and you have this situation. If you follow me, your bottle's still retained, but it obviously it's not snugged onto there. Okay? Yeah? So on our current Firehawks, we're able to put on a low-pressure cylinder contour system. Um, are we able to do that with this? Sure. Same, Same exact problems. Okay. So let's just take this to answer the question and pose it a different way. I'm at a, a structure fire, uh, mutual aid. I run out of my high pressure cylinders, and all I have is low pressure cylinders. What am I going to do? Spin an adapter onto that low pressure cylinder, put it into my SCBA. Where did we say the low air alarm is going to go off on this SCBA? 33. 33, which we said, I don't know if anybody did the math to check me, but 1450, between 1450 and 1500, right in there. Low pressure cylinder is 2216. Okay? A couple chugs and you're out, right? So it's not, but does it work? Yes. Is it perfect world? No. But here's the other part of that question. Who has low pressure? Nope. Nobody, I don't think it works. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> not, you're not picking on it, but you follow me. Is is low pressure is I don't, it's not extinct. I mean, it's it's darn near though. Uh, it's pretty. I mean, the only customer I can think of in my mind is uh, Glide Oregon uh, has low pressure. Uh, it's the only one that I can actually come up with in my mind right now. Uh, it's just that's 
Yeah, I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> uh, okay, we got that. We got that on there. Uh, okay, uh, so I think we kind of got the pneumatics. We got the air, taking it from the cylinder, mask, up through the regulators, all the electronics. A couple other things to discuss is uh, uh, rescue air, and then also RIT, and then obviously Donnie, the SCBA, and the ergonomics. So I think we're on a good path here. Uh, let's go... This, let's go this way first. Uh, so what you have is you're going to be upgrading. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry to distract you. No. Nope. When we sanitize that mask, yeah. what, what is the uh, actual amount of mask you have to okay. down there? For? Yeah. Just so done, just got done using this mask. What I need to do is I need to have cleaner sanitizer. Okay. So I don't think you use the MSA stuff. I'm not sure. I don't know. It's, fire, it's the virus staff. Okay. So whatever that is, you'd put that in on a bucket, five-gallon bucket of water, okay? Uh, the cleaner that you put in there, boom. And then you have another uh, bucket, double sink, whatever, just warm water. Completely submerse this face piece, okay? Now, depending on what the cleaner is, it has a contact kill time. That's a minute, two minutes, ten minutes, I don't know. So whatever you're using, read the back of the bottle, it'll tell you what it takes for killing it. So you put that in there. The beauty is now, let it soak. Go. Take no stuff out. Do not. You can if you desire, but you do not. Kind of discourage it unless it's somebody got sick or something, you know, if you follow me, it's one of those deals. Uh, uh, but here again, then when you pull the mask out, you want to uh, submerse in, in the uh, warm water rinse and let it air dry. No hair dryers, ovens, whatever you can think of. We let it air dry, and we don't let it air dry on the front apron in the sunlight, okay? This is a Kevlar head net. You let it sit in the sunlight, repetitive hours for, you know, repetitive years, and this will weaken the Kevlar. I have all the washing and stuff. They're already out there. So. It'd be, as a general statement, and don't pin me to this exact, but it would be the exact same process that you're doing now. The difference is you don't have to remove things off the mask. The, the net, how does that come off? Uh, the head net? Yeah. Yeah, you could, a couple different ways. Um, you can take these uh, buckles all the way off if you want. I don't know if you can see from where I'm at. But you slide this, and uh, that comes right off of there. Or obviously, you can just undo the, uh, the weave right here, if you follow me, and be able to take the head net all the way off. Um, you can machine wash it, definitely. No chlorine, or cl uh, chlorine, <laughs> bleach, thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, not above 110 uh, uh, water temperature. Um, so those are the two things that uh, you don't want to use. No bleach and uh, 110. Um, encourage it. It's great. Wash the head nets because they get right. If you completely submerse the mask and do a proper cleaning, usually the mask gets a good enough wash that you don't probably have to wash it. Where we see mask head nets that get gross, is individual issue mask. People that have an individual issue, which some of you might, smaller or larges, and they never get cleaned and they get ripe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah? What's the best position to put those in right now in the dryer? Um, <laughs> great question, horrible answer. Your biggest problem is you have a double seal on here, so you kind of have to shake it out if you follow me, and then I would probably let it hang this way from the sense of ease here. Obviously, you could do it here or here. I'd say probably this way. Yeah. But at the end of the day, what you need to do is this, and then you're going to have to kind of get that water because water will trap itself under the double seal. Uh, on your SCBA, your, current, your new SCBA is just like your current SCBA. You have what's titled a universal rescue air connection. It's a high pressure quick disconnect located within four inches of the cylinder coupling nut. It's been required on breathing apparatus since 2002. The whole intent is when we go in for RIT, everybody, brand X, Y, and Z, all have the same type of fitting, all functions all the same, so we can bring air into a downed firefighter. Um, kind of, I won't say spilt milk, but I think everybody knows that now. If you follow me, it's not anything new. There is nothing different with this breathing apparatus and its universal rescue connection. The fitting location is located right here. Once again, I don't know if everybody can see that, uh, is right where that white light was shining out. So we're right down just underneath the cylinder connection. Um, it works, like I mentioned, the identical way that your uh, uh, existing system works. Um, you have currently three RIT kits in the fire district. Um, those three RIT kits are going to be upgraded. What's going to be changed is the second stage regulator and the mask. The rest of the RIT system will stay exactly the same as it is. 
Um, in doing that, we're also changing the bags. So you'll have this exact bag with the new regulator and that on there. Make sense? You can load, bags are funny, you can load them 16 zillion different ways and everybody's right and everybody's wrong, whatever, I'm not going there. At the end of the day, this is the way they show in the video how to do it, so that's the way I, uh, I loaded it. But here again, there's a lot of different ways. You have a shoulder strap holder here, so you have the ability to hold the rit kit here. It has a handle here, a handle here, it has a hard plastic skid, so it's much easier to slide along the uh, carpet or wherever you're on. Um, on the side of it, it has a, a release right here. This pulls out your uh, universal rescue connection. Okay? So now I have the ability to connect in to the down firefighter. Obviously, I'd have to turn my cylinder on. Okay? So now I'm equalizing the two systems, just like you've known. Anytime I choose to, I can disconnect, stopping the transfilling process. Make sense? I'm, not, I'm kind of going to skim over this because I think it's already in tune to everybody. If there's somebody that doesn't know, has more questions, let me know. But now I can't get to that fitting. Okay? So now I go into my option B, C, D, if you follow me. What I have the ability is a buckle right here. This opens up to an SCBA mask and second stage regulator. What I also have is the hose system that comes out with a quick disconnect. So now I can do is I can connect a regulator. I give that person that's down a regulator. Obviously what's happening then is they're breathing off of this system and not breathing off of their SCBA. If I can take their SCBA off, maybe that's what I gene I need to do. It's now a neighboring fire district. They don't have the same regulator that I have. They don't, I can't get to that universal rescue connection. They've had a cut in their high pressure hose. Their cylinder's damaged. Whatever the situation dictates, I have the ability to give them a complete mask. Okay? Note there is a couple differences on the RIT kit regulator to your SCBA regulator. There are no lights. There is no microphone. The hose is narrower because we don't have an electronic cable going up to it. Watch this amber, you can't see it right under the light, sorry. Uh, I don't know if we can oh. that really it. Now it's red. Uh, <laughs> um, so, note here again, green when I'm above 50%. So from full to 50, I have green lights on the front, green lights on the back. I come down to 50% of my error. Note what happens, amber to the front, amber to the back, and at the bridge of my nose, right here. No? Yeah, okay, I'm getting half of you. The front part, see that's why you sit in the front of the class. Uh, you'll see it uh, when you get into a darker environment. Um, the idea is I can look at your face, I can look at your chest, I can look at your back, I can know where your air pressure. <laughs> <laughs> For once, I was like, that's not mine. <laughs> okay, I come down now to my low air alarm mark. Once again, 33%. Note what happens. All those lights did what now? Okay. Bell is powered by air. As soon as the air is gone, the bell stops ringing. Notice the lights still red. <laughs> Pushing twice with no air pressure would shut the system off. But also note, what happened when I hit 33% is I got another light located right here, a white light. Can everybody see that where you're at? It's shining directly on my universal rescue connection. So now when I hit that 33%, the RIT team can come in and have an easier time being able to try to find where that fitting is located. Okay. Now, no air pressure in the system. I can push twice on either one of the green buttons. So either side makes no difference. It's not one on one side, one on the other. It's double pushing on either side. Note what will happen is I'll get the international off symbol. It will deluminate and everything shuts off all at once. My control module, my pass device is off. My amplifier is off. My lights on my back are off. Everything's back to sleep. Make sense? Okay. And it only happens when it's not completely off, right? Correct. If I have air pressure on and I push twice, well, I have to let it turn on first, but once it's on, 
uh, if I push twice on the green buttons now, all it's going to do is reset that clock for the pass device. Okay? I was talking about 18 seconds of no movement. By pushing twice, it just reset that clock. Now it's starting again. Push it again. Now it's resetting again. It also illuminates my backlight. On our current one, you hit a button and it will tell you the approximate time left. Yep. Does that help? Does that it does. Yep. I'm headed there right now, so thanks for the lead-in. Um, so what you have here is you have two displays of air pressure. One is a mechanical gauge. If you were to have batteries completely die, whatever happens, this still works. No battery power required. This one here obviously is illuminated. It requires battery power. When I push the either one of the green buttons once, notice what happens. It backlights my display to be able to see where my air pressure is. If I push it twice, a combination of two, it's probably gone back, so now I've got to push it twice. It goes to a secondary screen. Can you see that? And what it's going to be telling me is how many minutes remaining I have until my cylinder is at its low air mark. Okay, your team today made the selection. We could select different where we wanted that time remaining to be at. And what they chose to select it to was this has how many minutes of air you have at your current breathing rate. Um, and the way you've been breathing over the last 60 seconds, this is how many minutes of air you have left until you hit the low air mark on your SCBA cylinder. Okay, right around, I, I, I think I did this last time and I already forgot. Take uh, 4,500, divide it by 0.33, and you get that mark. It's like right around 14 something, 1460 or something like that. Um, so that's what it's taking the calculation to. Make sense? He's going to tell me the answer. Yep. It does as well. Yep. Brings your heads up display lights up. Depending on how you have your heads up display, uh, heads up display lights set, your department has them set so it comes up intermittently. So that would bring those lights up. If you wanted those lights as a group, you say, you know what, we want those lights on all the time. Your SCBA technicians have the ability to change the setting of the SCBA so those lights are on all the time. There's a lot of customization to the SCBA if you so desire. So if there's something you don't like other than the sound, uh, uh, let the SCBA techs know, and there may be the ability to discuss pros and cons of making an adjustment. Um, so let's go back to reading that time remaining. Um, so I push twice has time remaining right there in the display. It's right now not giving me a reading. And the reason for that is I haven't had the SCBA pressurized for three minutes yet. Once it's pressurized for three minutes, then it starts giving me a reading of how many minutes I have left until I get to my low air set mark. Make sense? Active breathing, last 60 seconds. Assigned ventilation, huffing and puffing, says I got 10 minutes of air. I come, I sit on a ground monitor, I'm not breathing as heavy, I push twice, it now says I have 30 minutes of air. Because I've changed the rate of consumption over the last 60 seconds versus what I have left, and that math equation has changed for me. Make sense? Anybody die? Okay, it's the same, okay. So, so I think probably not, in, same exact thing that the dive industry's had for, what, 20 years probably? We're finally catching them. Uh, <laughs> uh, so on that secondary screen, you also have some other icons at the top. One, and I don't remember the exact order, uh, one is a thermal alarm. Um, that would be as if your SCBA ever crested a time heat duration. You're going to get an audible alarm as well as a visual indicator on here that you've hit a high thermal alarm. The SCBA doesn't stop functioning. It doesn't say you got to leave, whatever. Obviously, it's just trying to tell you that it's hot. You need to cool the environment or leave the environment. It's based on project fires, which is a study of core temperatures, of uh, internal temperatures of the body. 600 degrees for approximately two minutes, 200 degrees for approximately 22 minutes. If you break that curve, it sounds the alarm. Nothing needs to be replaced. You just need to drop below that time heat duration. Same thing you have on your current breathing apparatus. What's up? A two-tone beep every three seconds. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. And then you also get an icon of a thermometer flashing on your screen. Um, the next one over is a, 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 a Bluetooth. Here again, it's available on your SCBA. Nothing to connect to it, so it doesn't have any blue color around it, so it's not connected to anything. The next one's an open hole because you don't have the telemetry system, so there's no icon or anything. And then the last one is an indicator of your battery. So if you ever want to see where your battery is at, you push twice, 
top corner over here gives you the ability to see where your battery is at. Steve, will it try to connect to Bluetooth devices around it? No. Right now, today, we just disabled the Bluetooth on the SCBA. So the Bluetooth is disabled. Once again, your SCBA technicians have the ability with a little keystroke to be able to turn it on if they so desire. And then one more question on the gauges. Which ones are the most um, reliable for doing an accurate for accuracy? Yeah, so I think where I'm going to take your question, if I read it wrong, let me know. If you're comparing the cylinder gauge to the SCBA, I would always look at the dial. Okay? Digital display is a great just indicator as well, but what you're looking at is you're looking at a dial here, you're looking at a dial here. So compare the two dial gauges, and you're not relying on electronics or any of that nature to look at. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, battery, uh, one last thing on here, I'm sorry. Uh, panic button, red button in the center. That's your panic button. Just like you have now, you push that, it sends it into full alarm. Notice though here is I'm pushing it and nothing's happening. If I push and hold it down for three seconds, then it goes into full alarm. Okay. I don't even start. Uh, <laughs> Or off crowd. Trying to give you some credit. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, here again, you got to push and hold that button down. The intent with that is, when you want it, it's there to be able to be pushed, but it's not going to inadvertently get bumped and turned on. Note that that's right underneath where the lights are at. So in a dark environment, easy to be able to find it. It's also uh, not recessed, uh, what do you call it when it's above, uh, protruding. Uh, so easier to find with a gloved hand, be able to find where that button is at. Talking about batteries, um, here again, I think most of you already know this, but I'll go ahead and hit on it as well again. We have one battery on the entire breathing apparatus. So uh, where your existing SCBA has, I think, three locations for the battery, this SCBA has one location for the battery. Everything is powered by one battery in the system. That battery is located right in your spine, so right in the center of your back, right here, this is the battery pack. Your waist belt buckle becomes the key to take the battery out. So all you simply do is at the top, pull, and the battery clip comes out of the SCBA. When I say the battery clip, what the battery clip is, is six C-cell batteries. Alkaline C-cell batteries is what's inside of here. Um, four screws, four screws, so eight screws total. Cover comes off. Eight batteries sit inside of here. Cover goes back on. Torque the screws down. Away you go. So torque's 15 uh, screw. It's either 15 or 10. I'm sorry, I can't remember, but one of the two is what the size of that screw is. Okay. Um, how often are you going to need to replace the batteries? Great question. Don't have an exact answer. The way that your department has configured the SCBA, lights and features and all those type of things, my estimation would be around six months. Um, but here again is if you change how the lights are being shown and all that, um, you obviously could get more, you could get less. Okay. Not using the telemetry, not using the Bluetooth is taking things that don't, you know, not using things that suck power, so that's obviously helping you get some battery life. Um, what is the plan from the department as far as replacing batteries? I don't know that we've discussed that yet. My assumption would be is once would be on the annual testing of the SCBA, and the next one would probably be basically half a year from that mark, if you follow me, whatever that is. Okay? Do you have to uh, take that out when you're cleaning? Uh, you do not. Nope. It can be completely left in. You can take it out if you desire. No problem. Um, the connection is that. I have no clue what it's called. Uh, it's got an O-ring on the uh, end of it here, but uh, does not have to be removed for cleaning. It doesn't on the battery itself, but I'll put the battery back in. Uh, let me just table your question. I, I hear you, but let me just, I'll show it one second here. One last thing on the battery is it only goes in one way. What I mean by that is um, I'm not challenging you. You have strength unknown to mortal man. <laughs> <laughs> but if it takes a hammer and a chisel, take a deep breath and try again, okay? Uh, you should be able to drop the battery in real easy. Note that it doesn't line up and allow me to put it in backwards, if you follow me. I, when I, so I put it in uh, the correct way, it falls in that easy. Once I put a battery in, what you're going to see is you'll see the lights turn on the back first, and then on the front, you'll hear it beep, it'll turn on, it'll do a diagnostic, it'll give me a green check mark, and then the unit thinks that it's time to be on, if you follow me. 
what it's done is it's checking to make sure the battery power and everything's working properly. So notice now it has red lights. Why is that? No air pressure, right? Pushing twice shuts the unit off. Okay. But now going back to the uh, gentleman in the back, how do I know where the battery's at? I got to do my rig check. Are you telling me every time I got to pressurize and then I got to look at the display to see where the battery's at? Oh man, really? No. The answer is you can check the battery, where the battery is at by simply holding down either one of the green buttons for three seconds. What it'll do is it'll show a picture of your battery and show you where you're at. Okay. Somebody's nodding, so it must be up. Um, so what it's showing me there is that it basically of where my battery is at. Okay, give me the ability. That will also notice how it's green right now. It'll go amber or red based on 50 or 25 percent. When should you replace your battery? My answer to you is if you see below 50, replace it. I mean, grand scheme of the world, batteries are pretty inexpensive. But you know, how often are you doing it becomes the issue. Um, we weren't going to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. Um, what you'll have eventually, now not tomorrow, not when they first go into service, is when you hold that button down, you'll have the ability to have your apparatus number, the, the rig that this is assigned to, will be displayed right there. So if it's engine 14, it'll say engine 14. So now envision you got 25 SCBAs laid in the rehab area, and you're now ready to go home, and you want to know which ones go on your rig. Obviously, what you have the ability is hold that down and know where it is. What you also have is every SCBA, you guys also, for your department's taking care of you, is you have an apparatus assignment. Okay, so I think it's on this side, right? Yep, right here. So this is the ladder pack, so notice it has its assignment right here. So this is a way that you can figure that out as well. Okay. Um, Quick question. What yeah. is the diagnostic checking? Yeah, mm. I wish I could tell you. Uh, not smart enough here again. Um, what it's checked, to, what I, I'm going to tell you it's checking is it's checking battery conductivity and that it has enough power to work. I believe it's doing a lot more than that, but I'm not the engineer, so I wouldn't be able to tell you all the fancy things that it's doing. I apologize. Okay. It's telling you that it's okay to use, work. Okay. Um, battery questions, anybody? Good. Okay. Not putting my sales hat on, but putting my sales hat on. You have, with this SCBA, anytime in the future you want to go to rechargeable batteries, we have rechargeable batteries as well. So wherever you want to land in the battery scheme of things, you can. The negative of battery char uh, rechargeable batteries is you got to buy chargers to charge the batteries, right? So there's the added cost part. So outgoing batteries are always going to be a lower cost standpoint. The question is, is the hassle of taking them apart and then also the hassle of going and buying them and all that. But cost standpoint, alkaline will always be a lower cost because of the chargers. Questions, comments on the electronics of the breathing apparatus? Where are you at? I, I, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Moisture will not affect that battery packet, is it sealed? Correct. The, uh, uh, and I don't have one that's apart to be able to show you really easy. It's uh, uh, completely gasketed all the way around. Um, I'll jump onto my soapbox, sorry, here again. The SCBA has to be tested to pass NFPA, elevated to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, dropped into a water bath, elevated to 500 degrees Fahrenheit again, dropped into a water bath, the battery component immediately opened and there can be no moisture. Not only water, but moisture. So we can't allow moisture to get in and we can't allow off-gassing of the batteries with the elevated temperature. And the SCBA obviously passes all of those. So here again, the other angle maybe that you're going to is, is everybody in the department going to be able to replace batteries? There is a torque on those screws so that we know that it's tightened down properly, not over torqued or under torqued. So my assumption would be is you'd probably have your SCBA technicians uh, being the people that are you know, changing the batteries on the SCBA. Nothing says you can't have a couple extra clips and be able to, you know, whatever. Send them out to each other. Right now, uh, we haven't gone there yet. I think we what the stance was we were just going to see how things go and see because, like I said, we don't really know how long the batteries are going to last. I think initially, as we're using them more, they're probably going to go down quicker, and then as we kind of level out. So, uh, I think you know potentially it sounds like we'll probably need to get a few as we see how things go. But yeah, and it's it, and you know, that's the beauty of it is you can. Play it as the game goes, if you follow me. You can add more outlines. You find out that this first front line engine is, you know, 80% of the calls are used by it or whatever the number may be. Maybe you put rechargeables just on that rig. And then the extras that you take off the outlines, 
can be your spares. You know, here again, you can figure the puzzle out as you move forward with it. I'm sorry. Here again. I'm sorry. Here. Here? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yep. Sorry. I can't read your lips either because your head's right behind that guy. So I'm, <laughs> I'm one of those guys that can usually read lips and kind of understand, and I couldn't even see you really either. <laughs> so anyways. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's the electronics of the breathing apparatus. Uh, uh, going off of that. Uh, didn't talk about the audible bell, but I think it was kind of intuitive for you folks, but I'll hit it real quick, is obviously just like your current breathing apparatus, anytime you pressurize the SCBA, you should hear the audible bell cock. If you don't hear the audible bell cock, and what I mean by cock is as you're pressurizing it, it should ring a few times and then stop. Um, if you don't hear that, depressurize it and repressurize it. It still doesn't ring. You do not use the SCBA. It's out of service. Grab another one. Do whatever you got to do. Um, just like you've had right now. The bell, it sounds different. It's a different bell. Completely agree on that. But the operations, everything about it is the same thing. Okay? Um, going then to the uh, uh, SCBA cylinder. Uh, so what you have on this, and I uh, got good reviews this uh, afternoon from everybody that came up and uh, played around, but you have a quick connect on the SCBA cylinder connection. So rather than having what they call a CGA thread, so your existing scenario, you have the bottle has threads on it, you're coupling that on your SCBA, and you tighten it down. There's an O-ring on the coupling nut, and always the risk is that the vibration or whatever this gets loose, you pressurize, and what fails? The O-ring, right? Well, the O-ring didn't fail. In essence, you failed the O-ring. You didn't tighten it, because the O-ring basically was not tightened down, so it blew. Um, but I always like it when people say the O-ring failed. It really wasn't the O-ring that failed. It was because it was a, not tight, so it failed. To alleviate that, what we've done is we've made a connection system. The second stage regulator has what we call a purge feature. I can activate the airflow by pushing the end of the regulator. Note on here, it has a hard cover, okay? To activate this regulator, what do I have to do? Breath in, okay? Somebody that's in a bad situation, that may be a bit much to ask of them. So here again, as a rescuer, I can activate their air by simply pushing that button, okay? I still have a full functioning bypass as well, so if I want to give them just a constant flow, I have the ability to do that as well. Make sense? Okay. So here again, you have some options in regards to the RIT kit. 60-minute cylinder inside of here. Obviously, all you need to really get access to is the hand wheel to be able to turn it on. Um, you, on the other side, here again, you guys will set this up what you deem proper for your department. But the bag has the provisions to have two big pockets on the outside here for tools, whatever you desire, glow sticks, all of that. Um, idea here is a flashlight would go inside of here, give you the ability to tie down a flashlight has mollies on the back here, so if you wanted a rope bag or anything onto here, you have the ability to put a rope bag here. You also then have this long zipper here, which allows the bag to expand out. So if you so desire, you could put a rope bag inside of here and have it pail out through these snaps right here if you so desired as well. So there's lots of different uh, options with this bag. Um, here again, I don't want to say I don't sell the bag. I sell the bag, but I don't know all the ins and outs of it, if you follow me. Uh, it holds the air system very well. Gives you a lot of extra features and benefits. Um, so the upgrade that we're doing in a general statement, just here again, don't get too exact on me, but a general statement is we're changing this right here and the bag on your existing systems. Two of them are getting brand new 60-minute cylinders. One of them is basically a brand new RIT kit, so its 60-minute cylinder, 60 cylinder is not being replaced. Okay. Probably brings up another question if you're not thinking it. I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. These, because we're upgrading them, what do they have? Do they have our quick connect? Nope. No. We're not doing anything to the alarms or the cylinder, right? Okay, so they still have the threaded connection. Okay. So is that a big issue? Well, not really, because how often do you undo your RIT cylinders and all that? Where the issue will be is when I go to refill that cylinder, what do I need to do? The easiest thing to do would be to spin one of those adapters on, torque it on, and put it onto there. 
And the reason I say that is I forgot this, and I apologize for that, is you have a three position fill station up top there, right? Okay, so you can fill three cylinders all at once. Note what we, we've already changed one on you. Um, what we did this afternoon is we changed one of them over to being this quick connect, okay? I don't remember where's, was it the last position? I don't remember, first, last, I don't remember which one it was. But anyways, it'd be pretty obvious, I think. Uh, you'll look at that, you won't be able to spin a coupling nut on. Um, it's not the one that was a zip nut. You had the zip nut, a regular one, and then the quick, so the first one on this side, yeah. Uh, so what happens now is when you go to fill a bottle, open the bottle and start filling, okay? So now my rib kit has threads. What do I need to do there? Like I was saying, take one of these adapters, spin onto that rib kit, and fill it through the quick connect. All three of your positions on your fill station will become this quick connect once you go into service. We just did one now so you could train, but still be in service with your existing cylinders. Once you go into service, all three will be changed over to this. And then you also have one additional fitting that looks just like this right here. Uh, I don't know where, I keep looking for Gordon and I don't see him, so I don't know, yeah, you may know. I don't know where this is going to be stored. Um, but the intent of this one fitting is, is it'll work on anybody's fill station. Okay? What it has is the threads of an SCBA cylinder. So it would couple on to anybody's fill station and give them the ability to fill your bottles. So if it goes in the command rig, if it goes in the busiest engine company, uh, jockey box, you know, I, here again, you guys will figure that part out. But you have all three positions going to be quick connect on your fill station. And then wherever you need this auxiliary filler, for lack of better terminology, would be another option that you have. Make sense? Yes? Hold on a second. What did you just say? Why can't we just permanently have an adapter on our cylinder with the quarter turn? Like you have there, but just switch the fitting. Put the quick fitting on the other end so you can just screw that position as well. So you don't have to put torque down. Okay, I guess I'm being really stupid. I'm sorry, I'm not following you at yes. all. I uh, think he's just saying put, quick, put the whole quick fitting set up on that. But the thing is, you have, on to, here? You have to kind of double. Yeah. The thing is, though, you'd have to have that piece yeah. in there as well. So, you so let's say if I'm... Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, so if I'm reading your question correctly, and if I'm not, we'll go further. If you wanted to upgrade your RIT kits further, and put this type of connection onto them, you can do that. You have to buy this $550 fitting and then a $40 quick connect to do that. So that's why I think it wasn't done, shall we say. Um, is that what your question was? No? Am I missing it? Well, <laughs> you have a standard fitting under right now, right? The 60 minute bottle. On the, yes. Okay, and we basically screw on that fitting. Yep. I guess. I, I'm not really following you still, so. <laughs> you switch right now to the fill station. Why can't we just get the fitting for the regular thread? Oh, and have an adapter. That's in essence what you're doing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is you'd have this, adapt, this, this adapter, and you'd have an adapter that goes into this. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's, here's what I'm getting at. This is your fill station, okay? The three of these. You have one of these sitting up there, let's say. When you go to fill that 60-minute cylinder, you spin that onto your cylinder, and now you fill it just like you do all your other cylinders. Correct. So you just have your SCBA tech torque it. You can't just tighten that one on there? You could, because you're going to fill it and take it off. So yeah, I mean, just don't over torque it when you go to put it on, is I guess the statement. I think we're making a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> I mean, if I'm 
I'm missing something, by all means, tell me. But I don't. All it takes is money. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I, and I, if I'm not following, I apologize. I'm <laughs> not following. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll still ask my question. Okay. It's a slightly different question on the same thing. Okay. If we have that coupler on our rip packs, yeah. is that system acceptable to use in a hazardous environment? What you just did, can that be done interior? Um, yes. It would be just the same as interior changing a cylinder right now as you would be. Uh, you're not contaminating. In, in, in the fire environment, when this ball is going down, and we're not going to get the guy out, and we don't have another bottle, if we own the quick coupler, could we then add that into the mix? A, cylinder, a standard cylinder. So if this cylinder was to go empty, would you be able to grab another cylinder and put into the rig kit? If we owned the quick coupler, would we? Yes. 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 yes, you would, yes. You'd have to take the adapter off and adapter off. spin it into there, yeah. Okay. yeah. That, that's the whole beauty of the way that quick adapter works, in my opinion, is it makes it so that you can take it on or off and be able to adapt to a standard thread or to quick connect. The reality is, though, now with the the bond adding some new one hour bottles into it, we've actually got a pretty decent uh, inventory of one hour bottles, and so it would be more useful or likely that you just put another one hour bottle in there. And, now, and with all three kits available, that right. gets But, but let's, let's touch on that. Your likelihood of changing a cylinder in a RIT kit in a hostile environment, in my opinion, are slim to none. And what you would do is you would bring another RIT kit in take that existing RIT kit out, non-ideal H, change it around, and Absolutely. bring it back. I was just okay. asking the old... Yeah, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. But you follow me? Uh, we're split eight ways in, in the big one. Right now, we don't have the ability... Or do we, did we end up with hose from air pack to air pack? No. We don't have that? Okay, okay. I do understand the answer. Um, because you can't, it, can stay connected to somebody and change that cylinder. Because if the line's pressurized, you can't break the seal at the coupling nut. Right. So. And I also can't bring in if the air pack off of the truck. Because you have no way to connect it to it. But you do have, where you, your scenario being split up, you still have that feature where you have the buddy hoses and you still have those and you can. You we do have a, you, yeah, we still have all, those still work. Okay. But as you, far as daisy chaining packs. they're not on the SCBAs. No, but we okay. have them in our rip kits. Okay, so you still oh, have those. Yeah. Yes, sorry. I apologize about that statement then. Yeah, okay. You don't have them on the SCBA. Right. You have right. three foot hoses on the rip kits. Is that mm -hmm. what they are? Okay. okay. That, so that's that just another option be, that essentially mm -hmm. an air pack could become a, a, a rip kit. Air, Boom, right there. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so in that scenario, that's, that's, long time that's all right. I apologize. I didn't understand what you're saying. In that scenario, any SCBA becomes a rip kit. Right. Because all you do is you hook. This doesn't last as long. Exactly. Yeah, but we're really deep in it. Yep. We can drag two air packs into the rip crew, take yep. the rip bottle out, and change it out, right? Yep. Okay. Exactly. If you have that hose in the rip kit, yep. Okay. Yep. That's the question, right? That's fine. I didn't know you had the hose in the rip kit. Sorry. So if we get to the point we have to bring another pack in, uh -huh. do we have to take the mask off? I thought I saw a uh, coupler between the mask and the bag. Can you just take it? the hoses apart and we put that mask onto something or does the mask have to come off the regulator? Well, it no, matters. They, 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 yeah, so, so you don't have a quick disconnect on your SCBAs, okay? So you don't have the ability to disconnect, connect and all that except for the ladder truck packs, okay? Which I was gonna go into right now, so again, thank you for the lead way. Um, so there is a quick disconnect on the second stage hose so I can take the second stage hose off. But on your standard breathing apparatus, I have nothing to connect this hose to, okay? The exception to that is where we're gonna head now is you have six SCBAs assigned to the ladder. Those six SCBAs have on them a low pressure line that's pre-plumbed, okay? It's coming off the first stage regulator at 80 PSI into a hose pouch right here. 
Inside of this hose pouch, what you have is a male and female snap tight fitting. Okay? So now if you wanted to, I think where you were headed, sir, is if I was on the ladder and on the RIT team, I can hook in right here and I can give this regulator to somebody else. Okay? The whole intent of these six SCBAs, I don't want to say is not that, but that's not its real focus. The focus for this is so I have the ability to use this fitting to connect to the supplied air on the end of the basket. So that's what those are really intended for. This hose is a buddy breathing hose. So obviously with those six people on the uh, truck company, you have the ability to connect low pressure pack to pack if you so desire. Everybody clear on that? Okay. 100% different than what this gentleman was talking about on the transfill hose inside the RIT kit. This one is at 80 PSI, supply air to one another. The hose that's in the RIT kit is transfill, equalizing of cylinder pressures. Okay, I just want to make sure that we're clear. Why is there a male and a female here? Because NF, Mr. NFPA says when you have buddy breathers, you need to have a male and a female, so to, no matter what, when you go to that other person, you have the ability to connect. The idiocracy in the logic is the fitting isn't standardized in our industry. Okay? MSA uses SnapTight, Scott uses Hanson, uh, Interspiro uses Shane, everybody uses a different fitting. The next revision of NFPA, they will standardize these fittings. What does that mean for Silverton? It means nothing. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. If you want to change these, you'll spin these out, spin the new NFPA fitting, whatever that may be, into here. Make sense? Okay. Once again, just to, I know I'm over redundant, but six SCBAs assigned to the ladder have this hose pouch on it. The rest of them do not. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to leave that out for right now because I can't get it to go into there. Uh, okay. Going now then to the uh, uh, carrier and harness, unless there's any other questions, by all means. Except you're done. You, yeah, you're. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the on the SCBA mask with the disconnect. Okay. When you disconnect that, the person that's in the mask, if they, I'm assuming they're in a victim scenario, they are either still sucking air through nope. that hose. Check off. As soon as that disconnects, it's checked. They got one puff. Okay. You got one puff to get them back in okay. there. <laughs> so you have a check valve on this end, as you have a check valve on the other end. So you're not allowing contamination in, <laughs> but you're not allowing any air as well. So. When you're going to make a connection disconnect, if somebody's connected to this still, breathing off of it, better make it quick. <laughs> to suck in rubber or something, I think was your statement earlier, is because that's what you'll do. <laughs> so when the victim inhales on the first one, will they have air? Do you have to push that button before they'll be able to breathe? They'll activate it. If they take their first breath, it'll start flowing air. But the problem is, is they're not being supplied with any more air, so they have... Yeah, I wasn't talking okay. about just okay. in general. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right, going to the carrier and harness. Um, so what you got uh, in difference to what you have right now is uh, quite a bit more padding. Um, more width in the shoulder straps, which should equate to a little bit more comfort. We talked about the SCBA being heavier, but most people feel it has better ergonomics than the prior design. Um, so you still have a dual pull uh, uh, shoulder straps that come down. You also have a chest strap, a quick adjustment, uh, chest strap, fast tech, and then you have the ability to pull. These are real stiff because they're obviously brand new, um, but this obviously gives you the ability to adjust that chest strap if you so need to, desire to. Boy, that is really stiff. Uh, so uh, uh, then uh, what a lot of people like about this, I think you probably remember from our last <coughs> conversation, was you have the ability to have an, what we call an adjusting, adjustable swiveling lumbar. So the lumbar has a pivot to it. So it moves with your hips and moves on your back. What you also have the ability, based on your height, individual height, is the ability to adjust where that reaches you on your back. Right now it's in the lowest position. I squeeze this little piece of stainless steel right here, and it goes and it locks into the next position. And then I have the ability as well is to lock it in even a higher position. So here again, I'm a shorter individual, 
average, tall, here again, however you want to word it. Um, so, uh, I know who you're looking at. Uh, uh, so, here again, how does that affect the department? Where are we going to keep our SCBAs? What position? Yada, yada, all that. What I've seen other departments do, and I think it seems to make logic to me, is they try to get everybody to put the SCBAs back on the rig in the middle position. Okay? And then if I'm a tall person, I know I need to go down. If I'm a shorter person, I, need, I know I need to go up. But trying to restore, re uh, put the SCBAs back on the rig so that it's in the middle position. Can I change that when I'm wearing the SCBA? The answer is yes. You might fumble a little bit your first go round if you follow me, but then once you get a feel for it, it's pretty easy. So here again, adrenaline going, you forget about it, first bottle, second bottle, you want to change it. Here again, you have the ability to reach around your back, be able to change it. Um, you'll have to practice it a couple times to get the feel of where it's at, but like I say, pretty easy to be able to be done. Make sense? Okay. Um, uh, I think that's about it on there. Uh, I'll go ahead and don this up. I may screw up your sound here. I apologize for that. Uh, so here again, I have the ability. Um, what I would always recommend in this, I like to take this and put it back so I folded this waist belt up so it's tucked out of the way. Now when I want to grab it uh, to do it, I just grab the buckle and it's straight. It's not twisted up in knots. Have that ability. Connect the waist belt. Connect here. And I, now I can go ahead and hit the uh, chest strap and uh, be able to uh, miss the mic and hit there. Uh, let's get a medium mask. Uh, so here again, as I, as I mentioned before, I have the ability to have a downwards hook here. So I can have the mask in a standby position like this out of my way, take a hydrant, do whatever deals I need to do. Uh, putting the mask on then, have the ability here. I always recommend chin up and over. I don't have hair, so it doesn't really matter for me. But if you have hair and you go this way, you can bring your hair obviously into your seal. So right here, have the ability. Here again. Now I can check for a seal. Got a good seal, ready to go. When you're first starting here again, you guys have all put on SCBAs before, so you all know this, but I would highly encourage you take your right hand, open up the cylinder valve, and leave your hand there forcing you to use your left hand to connect the regulator. I want to take the regulator, I want to bring it right up and connect in. First breath, away we go. It's going to learn, I'm trying to just let it learn. I don't have to be quiet, I can talk. Well, Gordon, we set him wrong. Where's he at? Okay, we got it wrong, set wrong. So it didn't learn. Uh, we need to reflash him. Uh, so anyways, our setting is not proper on uh, what we set it. Uh, so what it should do is it should silence that inhalation. Um, and we don't have that setting turned on. So we'll reflash him and get that taken care of. But anyways, communications, one, two, three, four, you can hear me. Here again, bypass here. Regular breathing. Um, pass device, I got red lights in my nose. I had. I also obviously had red lights to my back when the pass device was going into its uh, full alarm, or excuse me, free alarm. I'm trying to sit motionless now. Come on. 18 seconds is forever. So notice the lights change from green to red. Okay. Here again, movement up here causes that to reset. Uh, bringing this up shows me where my air pressure is at. Uh, if I want a heads up display lights up, I can push that. It brings my heads up display lights up. I want to take the regulator off now. I simply depress both, come back. Mic is still going to be on for that five seconds, and then the mic will shut off. I want to go back onto air. I simply push in. First breath, away we go. As I mentioned, what I also have the ability to be able to do, take my helmet off, take my hood off, be able to take this off, hit the bottom button, and now I'm in that standby position with my mask off. Okay. Now I want to go back on there. All I simply do is bring this back up. First breath, away we go. Checking for a seal now because I didn't check before. Got a good seal. Okay. Questions, comments while I have it on. Here again, if I want the amp off, I simply hold down. The blue button will go away, amplifier is turned off. Bring the amplifier back on, away we go. 
Back to that standby here again here. Back to that standby. Questions, comments? Does the amplifier only have one volume setting? Correct. Put that mask back on your hood. Right there. It was in the holster. I'm good. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. When it goes into full alarm with the pass system, does your light on your URC automatically come on then also? No. Uh, it's not actually even a setting that we have. It's all based on air pressure is where we have the ability to set it. You can set it at 50 or 35 or 33 or zero. Oh, it's timing it right. We're supposed to turn it off with Okay. Uh, oh, probably didn't do good on the microphone there. All right. Uh, so now we're done using the SCBA, uh, cleaning, sanitizing after the call. Um, obviously, we would uh, de gross decon on scene. Keeping it pressurized always is what I recommend while you're doing that. Um, now we're ready to put it back onto the apparatus. Depressurize, pushing twice on the reset either side. Shuts the unit and all the electronics off. Um, now we're back at the station. We can clean it a little bit uh, more in depth. We'll take the cylinder out. One thing I didn't think I showed is on this uh, quick connect, if I'm pressurized, notice it won't come off. Okay? There's a pin right here. I think you might be able to see it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it won't allow that to come off. I shut the cylinder off. I drain the air. Notice that pin drops down. Now it gives me that ability to take it off. Okay. Um, so now we're back at the station, going to clean up things a little bit better. Um, take the cylinder out of the uh, SCBA. Want to inspect it for any blistering cuts, abrasion. Want to make sure there's no uh, damage to the cylinder. Has a 5 and 15. 5 years for the hydro, 15 years for the service life. All of your cylinders, I didn't check them all, but I think they're all uh, probably the same month or within a couple months of each other. Uh, so that's basically where your dates are going to be at. Um, so you fill that cylinder. Now with the SCBA, what you want to do is a better decon of the SCBA. What does that entitle? Obviously, it matters what the call entitled. Um, but what you have the ability to do now is basically, if you needed to, hose the SCBA down. This obviously is not allowing any air, water, anything to go into it because when the cylinder is not connected, it's checked off. Um, the only open hole that you have is at the end where the regulator is at. We'll talk about when we put a cylinder back in, making sure we don't have any water inside of here. Can be a sponge, can be a towel, can be a rag. I would always do it with the cylinder out. Most of the stuff gets locked down underneath the cylinder, and uh, that's where we really need to clean it out. So that's basically what we're doing. We're also inspecting the hoses for any rips, tears, or abrasion. Taking now a recharged cylinder, bringing it back in to the SCBA. Clip down, hit here, and now we're going to do a pressure check. This could also be your weekly uh, I don't know how exactly you guys do your SCBA checks, but this would be your function check, is what I like to call it, of the SCBA. So putting it back into service, and then probably also for you guys, your weekly check is what I'm guessing. Um, pressurize the SCBA. I'm listening for that bell, the cocking of the bell. A lot of times what I like to do is have the regulator in my hand when I'm doing this. That way I know the bypass is off, and I know the push buttons are pushed. Now I go ahead and turn the SCBA on. I'm listening for that bell. I know that that bell is working. Now what I'm doing is I'm looking at that mechanical gauge, and I'm comparing that mechanical gauge to my cylinder gauge. Should be within a 10% tolerance of each other, 450 PSI. Let's bring it down to 400 PSI. Should even be closer than that. Um, but here again, that's what we can allow for a variance. Go ahead and shut the cylinder off. What we're doing is a leak check. What we're going to do is we're going to wait about 30 seconds. What we can also do at the same time is check our pass device. No movement, what's going to happen? Pass device is going to start sounding pre-alarm tones. We're going to let it go through the first stage, second stage, third stage of pre-alarm, all the way to full alarm. When it gets to full alarm, wiggle it, make sure it doesn't reset itself. So there's the first stage. There's the second stage. Now that's the third stage. And <laughs> Like 90, 98 decibels at 8 feet is what it is. That's what the standard says it has to be. So pushing twice there, I shut the sound off, okay? 
Now, while looking at the gauge, I'm going to repressurize the SCBA. What I'm looking for is a jump in the needle. If I had a jump in the needle, what would I have? A leak somewhere. Easiest place that I have a leak is my bypass is cracked just a little bit, and it's in the holster, and I don't hear that. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, with it in my hand, that's why I like to have it in my hand, I know that it's flowing or not. Now, with the cylinder shut off, what I can do is I can check the gauge. I'm going to go ahead and drain it down, and when I come down, the gauge should come down nice and smooth, and when I hit, uh, uh, and I'm trying to show it so you guys can see it, but anyways, uh, when I come down to right around 1,500 PSI, my audible bell should sound, and ring all the way down to basically zero. Verify that I have all my lights working, right on my regulator on the back, both sides of the back and the front, shut the bypass off, squeeze both buttons to reset, straighten the waist belt all the way out, and put the regulator back into it. Now come over to the uh, pass device. I can push the panic button, ensure that it's working, and then push twice again. Unit should go to sleep. Okay. What I would also encourage you to do when you're doing your weekly checks is to take the dust cover off the URC, make sure that it's clean, the fitting isn't filled with a bunch of gunk, whatever, and that the center pin is still here. Pushing the center pin back in, and then just taking simply and twisting that loop out of it. Okay. Um, the truck packs, really no different other than I would open up that hose, make sure it's there, the dust covers are on it, and put it back in. Okay. So really no function difference other than a visual function difference. We already talked about the mask, your cleaner, five gallon bucket, completely submerged, rinse it, and you're set to go. Air dry. Don't put obviously a wet mask back into an airtight compartment. It'll be green when you go to pull it out the next time. Any questions? Yes, sir. Drying off the mask, just hang it up, no compressed air to help it. Absolutely not. No compressed air, no heaters, none of that. Um, there's a double uh, ring in here, so you gotta, gotta open it up to allow that out. You can use a towel on that, but don't use anything. And as I mentioned before, don't lay it on the apron in the sun, because uh, it's Kevlar strapping. Okay. Um, so we have a couple of CBAs up here, um, and I think um, there, there's more back there. Perfect. Uh, so here again, if you guys want to put them on, play around with them, by all means, we're here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you all very much.